we've got a great second section for you. Um, obviously, we were going to have Jordan Gray here, but I feel like we've levelled up. We've no. levelled up. Come on. You know, she might be on the last leg. This guy's got a film on HBO. This guy, too. <laughs> <laughs> He's a real-life movie star. I really I'm wonder what you were going to say there. I really worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we met Dave uh, during the, the COVID-19, uh, COVID-2020 lockdown. COVID-19 in 2020. Um, when he put on a concert for one in his back garden, right? And uh, when I say a back garden, it's a proper fucking back garden. Oh, my right? goodness, It yeah. was like Priory Park, is what it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it, what he did there was give a load of local musicians a, not only a platform, but paid us as well out of his own pocket at a time when all of our work went. We lost all of our work. Unbelievable, like, yeah. I was 37 quid a week down. It was an absolute <laughs> night. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's, he's a genuine legend, and we're really proud to bring him onto the stage now. So please make some noise for the brilliant Mr. David Hart. record and what we're going to do now is just to make sure uh, that everybody's set and uh, in the right places we need them. Can I just tuck right, yeah. yeah, David a little bit more? Because we can't see him on the floor. What do you mean it's all right? We can't oh, fucking yeah. see oh, him. Yeah. Oh no, he is right actually. Yeah, we need you forward. Yeah. Yeah. Let's move can that out of just, Can we all just take a moment? <laughs> this is the first time ever Ross has said John's right on uh, any, sort of, <laughs> any sort of recording equipment. <laughs> He is, to be fair, John is a useless fuck, so that is a first for all of us. Right, give us a little one two, Dave. One two. Yes! Hey. Can you hear him at the back? Yay. In the cheap seats? Uh, <laughs> hello, hello everyone. It's a bit cold, isn't it? Yeah. Hold on a minute, you're saying it's cold. Look at that fleece. That fleece is unbelievable. I know, right? I you had to slay a bear for this one. <laughs> <laughs> you look a boys. million you dollars, mate. You, you look a million dollars. Thank you very much. Um, it's a bit fresh. I would say I'm freezing my bollocks off, but I can't feel them. <laughs> so that would be a lie. I'll feel them for you if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what's great, right? Is for the last two weeks, I've had a publicist follow me around everywhere. <gasps> Right, and she's had this in the background of every interview. Like, if I pull my ear or I cross my legs, like, try and avoid the subject or say any swear words and <gasps> all of that lot. Well, she's been doing the fucking can-can. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> for the last two weeks, so... Tonight, I can be, uh, yeah, I can let it all a bit loose. You can and say whatever you want. She's though, not yeah. here, is she? No, she is not. <laughs> or Vanessa. If she sees this at home, I'm really so <laughs> sorry, Vanessa. I imagine Vanessa specifically said, no, don't do that. Don't. Yeah, <laughs> too many knob gags. <laughs> too many, Ross, too many knob gags. Yeah. So, Dave, uh, I watched your uh, documentary recently. It's absolutely superb, mate. Thank you very much. Mm, it's very, very good. Has anyone here seen it yet? Yeah. Mate, uh, honestly, oh, it's just nice. incredible. Um, but we'll, we'll get on to that in a minute. I want to talk about, like, we, we did meet during the, the COVID-19 lockdown. We did indeed, yes. You put on a concert for one. Yeah, well, I know what it's like to be a performer and not be able to perform. Yeah. It's fucking frustrating, right? Mm. And in that time, I was able to do a semi-COVID safe. Um, <laughs> just employ local artists to just come out and give us... 15 minutes, whether it's a bus, whether it's whatever it is, it's just nice to give back. Mate, it was like, wicked. I am a very fortunate disabled person, and you know, there's a lot of other people that are not as fortunate as me, and it was just my way of being able to throw something back. Yeah. I love how you compare me to not talk, not being able to talk about my knob during COVID to the situation that you're in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, honestly, my knob gets me in so many troubles. <laughs> <laughs> and right, and that joke. is the title of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> first joke, right? So this is what best mates are for. So when you have an accident as bad as mine, so I broke my neck, so I se uh, separate my spinal cord, so my chest folded into my nose. I was doing a stunt rehearsal, I was a stuntman, and that's the job that I did. I own that responsibility. Going forward, so they have to put me in an MRI to do, like, the scans. I had a stunt harness on, and... The nurses were all faffing to try and get the stunt harness off. My best mate, Mark Maley, who's now a stunt coordinator, Mark come in and uh, come and took the stunt harness off. And obviously I'm in and out with morphine and like just sort of semi-conscious. And uh, Mark leaned into me after they'd taken the stunt harness off, cut my clothes off. He went, Dave, he went, you should be proud of yourself, mate. It's like a baby's arm holding an apple. <laughs> All these nurses. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, I went into the MRI machine losing consciousness, laughing my tits. <laughs> so, that is what mates are for. Oh, uh, yeah, pictures or it didn't happen. 
<laughs> I know, yeah. Oh, mate, I, well, I can't control it, so it pops up all the fucking time. <laughs> Uh, Me too. It's why I can't get the bus anymore. Honestly. It's the vibrations. It's my I met Margot Robbie on the set of Barbie recently. No way. Wrong day to wear a cashmere tracksuit. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I, like, oh, I love Christ. you, mate. The fact that you've got a cashmere tracksuit blows my mind. <laughs> Yeah, I like it. Right, mate. Oh, yeah, why, why? The real question is, can we hang a Daniel O'Donnell calendar on it? <laughs> <laughs> why were you on this Barbie set? What were you doing on the Barbie uh, set? We were filming for the documentary at the studio. Oh, amazing. Uh, the producer of Barbie's friend of mine invited me and Daniel across to meet Margot. And do you know what? She felt like the sun. Like, the closer I got to her in my wheelchair, the like, more powerful she was. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm talking to her, and like, yeah, like, this arm's not got any function, but this arm has. So I lifted my arm off my armrest. I was like, cover your knob with your bad ass. <laughs> <laughs> at one point, I was, like, melting, falling apart, talking to her. Oh, oh, that's, what, oh, that's what it was like for me, watching I Bay for Uncovered with my dad. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Quick, get the cushion. <laughs> Mate, Channel 5, when we were growing up at 11 o'clock. Oh, yeah. Come on. Jesus. What was the... What was Come the... Euro trash. trash. Euro trash. Oh, <laughs> my. Could oh, you get it in? Nursed in a semi for so long and then you see a bit of boob and you're like, oh, fuck! Yeah, quick, yeah. Go, go! <laughs> Could you get it in before the commercial break? <laughs> that was... That was the game, right? Oh, mate, mate. Mate, we're the generation when porn was loaded really slow from the top to the bottom. Yeah, box. a gif would have got mm. me off back in the day. I know, yeah, mate, yeah. Well, Mad. when you can't control it, honestly, you get... Yeah. <laughs> There is so many knob gags. Oh. You want another one? Yes, yeah, please. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think this podcast would just be us talking about your knob. I, bet, I, bet I didn't get this oh, one this morning, did I? <laughs> so um, I had a super pubic catheter, which is like a tube that goes straight into your belly. Super you pubic any, catheter. Anyone work in the health services here? Anyone work in the NHS? Please thank yourself. Oh. Like You are the reason that I'm able to be here. Woo. So, thank you very much. Hold on, it's not a Tuesday night in lockdown. Um, Come on. <laughs> thank so, you, pots and pans. <laughs> so, yeah. So, we was... Uh, I was in the spinal ward at Stanmore, orthopaedic, and my mum and dad had helped learn to transfer me in and out of bed. Right. So, when I had two functioning arms, I could slide across a board, get in bed, and they would lift my legs up. So, I am lying flat on my back, looking at the ceiling, and I'm like, Mum, can you change the dressing on my super pubic catheter? And it goes right where your pubes are, right? So um, I was lying on my back and they were taking fucking ages. So I'm looking up. So I get the bed remote, bring it over, hit the bed remote, sit myself up slowly so I can look down, right? And you think breaking your neck is rock bottom. <laughs> I look down and my mum's standing on one side of the bed. My dad's standing on the other side of the bed. My mum is backhanding my boner out. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> I have officially hit rock bottom. Oh, <laughs> right. that was it for me. I was oh like, it don't get any worse than that. That's like, a whole category on Pornhub, mate. <laughs> I know, yeah. I'm going to start myself an OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, mate. Yeah. So it's, it's a journey. Like, living with a spinal cord injury, Like I'm very fortunate I can laugh at myself. And mm. the ridiculousness of being alive, right? If you ever feel unlucky... Just Google the odds of what it is to be alive, like. Yeah. And I can live with a broken neck because of expert healthcare services and all of like the support and all the people that you know prop me up and are the legs that I haven't got. So I'm really, really fortunate. Right. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. That. That's what I love about you, Dave. Is uh, you know I, I, had, I had a lot of respect for you anyway, having got, met you during the the COVID nineteen lockdown at, at your house, and like you know yeah. we got on like house on fire. You, the yeah. stories you well, got, you didn't mate. set my house on fire. Thank <laughs> <you>. <laughs> but, uh, Thanks, mate. I really tried. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, the way you you've dealt with you know w what is effective, you know, it's a catastrophic injury for most people, let alone someone who was as physical as what you were. You know, like in order yeah. to be a stunt man. You've got to be a top-level athlete. Yeah, in the UK, you have to do six sports to a competition level. So I had to do gymnastics, trampoline, and high diving, kickboxing, horse riding, swimming. So, so all of those disciplines I was competition level in. I was a competitive gymnast as a child, and that's how I got into it. My first job, I was 14 years old. The film Lost in Space, anyone seen it? Yeah, yeah Gary Oldman. I was the stunt double for the little kid on it. So um, I spent a summer at the studios at 14 just getting you know glued into rubber spacesuits and 
hanging out with movie stars. Like Matt LeBlanc was the most famous man on the world at the time because it was Friends. Yeah. And uh, it's just a really good laugh. And like I fell in love with the machine. I knew what I wanted to do. Yeah. So I went back to the gym and then I'd done another job and then I got the first audition for Harry Potter. And they strapped me to a broomstick on the back of a truck, drove me down the road. And I'd already read the books because I'd heard that there might be an audition coming. So I was officially the world's first Quidditch player. So oh that God, is so cool. Yeah, it's really cool. That was yeah. wicked. It was like the best ten years any human being could have in any uh, career. Like I'm I pressure makes diamonds, and I like pressure. Like, yeah. you know, and you know this. I love you all, but compared to setting yourself on fire, this ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> Bring out the gasoline. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I'm joking, we'd never ruin that amazing fleece. <laughs> oh, yeah, Please don't. <laughs> to be fair, that'd go up pretty quickly as well. <laughs> that fucking big time. Uh, yeah. So, like, I mean, obviously, an, an incredible experience for mm. anyone being on, on movie sets, let alone Harry Potter, you know, the biggest thing at the time, the most yeah. anticipated movie at, at the time as well. Yeah, it's massive. Um, but the amount of time you must have spent on a broomstick looking oh. at a blue screen... Unbelievable. If there was air miles for broomstick time, I'd be flying first class. <laughs> I wish there was. But yeah, no, I spent like, I lined up every shot. I was stunt double for not just in the first two films, but I've done. The first time you see me on camera, I'm actually Hermione underneath the bathroom stalls as a troll smashes for a... <laughs> You're yeah, 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 yeah. That's the first time you've seen me, so... Well, Emma Watson couldn't even take a troll smash. What I know, yeah. About? Well, like, dead you know, detonating loads of, of course, balls yeah. with doors. But, yeah, so Harry, Ron, Hermione, Neville, Malfoy, I've done stunts for them all, so... Wow! Yeah. Mate, that's outrageous. I actually think, just saying stuff, having watched the, the documentary now and, and having a bit more of a deeper insight into your life and work, yeah. I think just saying stunt double was doing you a disservice in a lot of ways, because you, you were like, particularly for Daniel Radcliffe, who was a, a young boy at that time, you were, you were way more than a stunt double. I don't think he would have been the same Harry Potter yeah. that he was without your support in, in well, the environment, you know. When we first saw him move, you know, when he smashes that bat and ball mm. in... Hold uh, on a minute, smashes is such a... Yeah, badly smashes yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. He swung a bat so bad, my boss just took his cigar out, looked at me, went, we've got some work to do with you. <laughs> so um, <laughs> he then come into the stunt department two to three times a week. I was his PE instructor. We would play. He was a kid and I would shut yeah. the stunt stores let him jump off port cabins on trampolines. Just like, just not have the pressures of the big giant film set and the production behind him. And uh, yeah, so we built up his physicality. So I taught him gymnastics. Um, we do some keep fit, fighting, wh whatever he wanted to do, just to, you know. And now when you see him, like his physicality, I can vicariously live through that because yeah. I know that I was yeah. part of that, you know. And everyone says he should be the Wolverine gag. Yeah, he should get the Wolverine job. Oh, yeah. Mate, I'm a shoo in for Professor Xavier, and I. <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> I tell you that. Oh, that's no, unbelievable. 100%. How do we get a petition sorted out? <laughs> I know, start it. Yeah. So, speaking of which, what, should, like, what do you do now? Do you, do you still get to produce do that documentary? Yeah. Uh, support my stunt community as mm. much as you I can. You do so much stuff for. Uh, I watched the documentary as well, and you're doing so much stuff. You, you, you work with. The cricket, uh, yeah, we raise money for the hospital. Yeah, yeah. Cut, you know, 120, 130 grand for the hospital. Amazing. That's wicked. Man. Do outreach, peer support with anyone with a spinal cord injury. Like, there's a young girl I sponsor that, like, she gave me the best present of my life last year. So, they, I like contribute to a co GoFundMe. Yeah. And she's a nine year old kid and she had a, a blood clot in her spinal cord. And she was like a lower level, but she lost all function uh, of her legs. And then she's been working and working and working in a physio. And she just last, like, just about three months ago, she just like, started moving her legs. Oh, like, and it's just like, fucking hell, right? It's, a, it's hard. Like, I'm in pain all the time and life ain't easy, right? But seeing stuff like that is silver lining on a very short Oh, cloud, mate, that's yeah, really cool. It's really nice. Amazing. So, just but to, to give back. is any way you can. Like, it's, in life, it's not what you take from the table. It's what you bring to it. Mate, 100%. And I, I think that's what sets you apart in, in a lot of ways, mate, is, is the way you dealt with what happened to you. Like, a lot of people could have just given up there and then. You know what I mean? In life, hate, anger, blame. Just sits with you. You know, mm. and when you can't run away from your problems, you have to sit with your problems. Like, I have to hold myself accountable because I can't distract myself from it. So, 
The only thing I can do is sit at the bottom of my pool with a scuba tank on. <laughs> yeah, I do breath holds. <laughs> yeah. The Wim Hof method? Yeah, yeah, a little bit, yeah. So my, uh, it started, it was about two and a half minutes, and then my record about three weeks ago was 4.25. That's unbelievable! 4.25! Yeah, For anybody who's ever tried that, that's yeah. incredible, yeah, nice. It's that's it. just like mental headspace, mm. you know, that's where your mind's at. Like. Did you do it in your pyjamas like when I used to teach you swimming at school? I swim. <laughs> I swim fucking naked. Thank goodness, let's talk more about yeah, your knob. Honestly, every time I get in, every time I get in, my dick pops up as well. <laughs> It's like up periscope, <laughs> like straight away. Periscope. Honestly, fucking joke. <laughs> <laughs> you know the other thing you learn as well, like you lose bladder and bowel function. So a day after my injury, I was rolled over and like I've had more hands up my ass than most of the Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> so they roll you over, they're like you've got to go toilet. I'm like, well, how am I going to do that? They're like, no, we do it for you. And then yeah, so you like instantly like in like. The, I mean, what's it called when you go in the post po, post triage? You go into intensive care. Yeah. In the intensive care ward, you're like, oh, okay, that's a new one that I've got to deal with, and that's just part of the journey that you have to sort of accept and get on with. But wow. well, never I neglect a socially conscious arsehole. <laughs> right. I've shit myself. Maybe that's the title of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. You are a socially conscious arsehole. <laughs> you, you are not so yeah, socially that's conscious. Bad. That's gonna be the title of my Edinburgh show next year. I think. <laughs> But uh, yeah, like I've shit myself in so many places. Oh, no. The worst one. Is, so have I. Yeah, no, yeah. The worst one was up a mountain uh, train in Switzerland. I got to the top of the fucking mountain, like looking overlooking glaciers. Oh, beautiful. And yeah, right. Yeah, you think that. So one dis one disabled toilet. So my mate Danny, I love him to pieces. My boy Danny is British gymnast. Um, he lifted me up and got me in the toilet seat and was like halfway from cleaning me up. So just before he lifted me, yeah, I was like, get you trapped. I was like, Dan, take your clothes off because you don't want shit all over your clothes. So he's in his pants. Hold on a minute, yeah. what the fuck is this? I know, you wait, it gets so bad. <laughs> all of his clothes? Yeah, so he's in, in his pants and right. trainers. Okay. His he's clothes. a British gymnast. Yeah, he just was. picture yeah. that, everyone. <laughs> Picture a British gymnast in their pants. Yeah. This is a whole category on Pornhub as well. That's why we're doing it. That's why we're doing it. But I did get through it. Shank, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so just as he lifts me up, we realised we forgot to lock the toilet door because a family opened the toilet door. <laughs> I am in his arms. He's in his pants. I've got shit all over me. And the shock and horror on this family's face. Oh, they will oh. always knock on a disabled toilet door for the rest of their life. Unbelievable. Like, that's just one of the things that, like, there's so many papers that I have to deal but with. But to be so. fair, who shits as a family? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> You don't take the whole Let's family, do you? That's yeah. weird, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, you sit around singing, singing Kumbaya together. <laughs> yeah, start a seance to get the thing out. Kumbaya. 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 Sorry, that was too far. I apologise. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so that's why he's on the big bucks. You know? yeah, nice. Oh, mate. So, I had a good one the other day. Like, since the films comes out, my Instagram's gone at mental. Mm. And uh, anyone know the actor Ben Barnes? Anyone know him? He's, yeah, he's lovely, like, you know, very pretty boy. Um, anyway, he messaged me saying some lovely things, and then he rung his mum and said, watch this documentary. And his mum rang him back and after the film, and she said, oh, now that's a man. So he replied that to me on Instagram, so I was like, I've got to go for it. I was like, Ben, is your mum single? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. tell, him, tell her it's like, you know when you're stuck in traffic and you're just stuck over a speed bump? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it's like. You'd have to be wristed off by a mum as well from what I've heard. Oh, yeah. yeah it's, it's whatever all right, team. All right, don't worry about that. That was a callback from earlier on. Don't make it weird. <laughs> but, um, you know, like, I met plenty of people that in the 90s were dumb kids that ran in front of cars that ended up in wheelchairs. Right, right. Um, it's all right. You've got to laugh at it. Oh, they, they do. Um, <laughs> And uh, so now we've all got speed humps everywhere, haven't we? Man. But what do you all you lot do? You buy giant fucking cars that if you do hit a kid, you'd fucking fuck them over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now ask me what I get driven around in. What have you got? What have you got? There's that Range Rover. Right? Oh, oh, no! no. Oh, unbelievable. No, You're obsessed with the Range Rover. selection, that's what I say. That's not your only motor, though, from what I can remember. Uh, yeah, I've had, when I had two arms, I've, you know, driven around the world. I shipped a car to Australia. Drove it across one side to the other with one of my best mates. Oh, all up mate. the coast, yeah, like, I, 
push for life. You only get one go, and as you, I know, it's not rehearsal. Mm. Mate, that's what I love about you, man. I like when we come around, when we're around your house doing that, that, that you, you know, you know how to live. You know how to live. Boy. I do well, yeah. yeah. I, was, I, I had a lot of, you know, men raise me, right? Like, and me, mum, and dad, like, just in general, like, there's a a whole age group of young boys that are looking to YouTube uh, just to, you know, find male role models. Well, I had that in my gym coaches and fellow stuntmen and stunt coordinators and, you know, stuntmen know how to live. Like, we work hard, we play hard, like. I've met people in the movie, in the film industry and they, and they all say, like, you ask them, where'd you go for a party? And they're all like, the stunt the department. Stunt and oh, no hesitation. And you were that guy for Daniel Radcliffe, right? Yeah, right, yeah. I got myself in lots of trouble. Yeah, you must. You right, must let's delve been. into that. Let's Come on. Oh, oh, obviously, don't, don't shut the fuck don't up. Don't say anything you can't. Oh, don't get ruin yourself, this for me now. Don't get yourself into <laughs> trouble. But we were in Newcastle two years in a row. Uh, the second year, I was just turned 18. And on BBC Radio Newcastle, I had a thing called Potter Watch, right? And what I would do, they'd give you per diems every night, so every day you'd have money to spend. So I'd just go out and the fucking piss, wouldn't I? <laughs> like, carnage. Newcastle's a good night out. Yeah, yeah. very irresponsible, Dave. I'm very disappointed. Yeah. Course, yeah. So um, I was out on a night out and managed to give it the large and Harry Potter stunt double, or as my friends would call it, cunt stubble. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I was lucky enough to pull two beautiful Newcastle. Uh, what are they called? Newcastle? Slags, I think. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, everyone. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> everyone from Newcastle. I apologise. You got it. <laughs> sorry. What, what is that? Andrew sorry. <laughs> the only time you see a real pair of lips in Newcastle is if you take knickers. <laughs> Yeah, that is a great So joke. sorry, everyone. I apologise. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. It's sorry. Funny, I can't it's believe true. I got to apologise to both of you. <laughs> sorry. This is um, a low point in my career. So yeah, I was. Um, I was lucky. I had a hell of a night, <laughs> and then put them in a taxi. And I was like, "Do you want me to pay for the cab home?" And they were like, "No, it's fine." They're in the back of the cab talking about the night. Mm. Well, the next morning, all the crew are driving into work. Potter Watch comes on BBC Radio Newcastle. <laughs> this was the line. The comes on BBC. <laughs> yeah. The taxi driver rang up and he was like, Harry Potter stunt double, wines and dines two girls, takes them back to his expensive hotel, doesn't pay for their cab home. Oh, oh come Mate, on. all of the crew were driving to work hearing that. Oh. I got the biggest bollocking you could ever imagine. <laughs> From what I hear, they got the biggest bollocking you could ever imagine. <laughs> So, yeah, oh, that is that's wild. one of the many adventures. I, I can't <sighs> let them all go because I got a book deal pending, which is nice. Oh, amazing! <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, nice. yeah, like just reflections on. But to, honestly, like all of my Harry Potter stories, and I've got hundreds. Like I'm like, where's Wally in the film? So I'm everywhere. Yeah. yeah. But um, I'm holding those back a lot of them. But the disabled stories, <laughs> mate, this is a journey. <laughs> I have been in because I push. Yeah, I've been in some. You don't stop, mate. You just don't stop. No, yeah. I, like this week, I done a piece with Conde Nast Traveller, and was on this morning this week, and it was really funny. I was trying to get the presenters to say the name of my podcast. Go on, John. Say Which it. is cunning stunts. Yeah, say it three times fast. Cunning stunts, cunning stunts, cunning stunning stunts. Cunts. Yeah, I don't stop it, please. <laughs> yeah, trying to get them to say that on this morning. Yeah, I like, I'll say it for you. <laughs> right. um, and it, to be fair, after Philip Schofield, they should have just said cunt. You know what I mean? <laughs> That is very true. The worst has happened. Mate, I can't, I can't feel my ass. I'm glad I weren't at the studio. Feel <laughs> <laughs> uh, my ass is his Instagram <laughs> tag. So, <laughs> what his Potter watch would have been. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so you, you, you have got a podcast, and it's all about the stunt industry. Yeah, right? I always wanted to turn the like. We don't get BAFTAs and Oscars. Like our industry doesn't recognise us as stunt artists, mm. which is a crying shame. And some of my mates risk their life still to this day. And I've got some amazing stories. Some of my best times were sitting around listening to all the stunt gags that people were doing. So I decided to start a podcast series. Daniel helped me record it. And then Daniel always wanted to turn the camera around on me and tell my story. And I was always really reluctant. And then I had some surgeries in 2019 and nearly left us. Unfortunately, it was like one surgery led to four surgeries and a brain surgery. So I pulled through that. And then after that, we, was, we thought we'd start fully tell my story and I was always reluctant Harry Potter means a lot to a lot of people hmm. like there's yeah. someone that I love dearly in my life like she's new to my life but for 15 years Harry Potter's a safe space she's also a quadriplegic she unfortunately was in a car accident 
and uh, she watches the films like that one and listens to the books and that gets her through bad times and I've spent one of the last 14 years in bed and I watch films and TV like yeah. they get that gets me through and to know that I've been there for her in the last you know 14 and a half years mm. it's just a really nice thing like and I know that right now like the world's to shit isn't it at the moment it's yeah. messy out there and but there are kids watching Harry Potter in conflict zones all around the world it's making them feel safe. 100%. And so, like, that's yeah. a really nice thing, like, to know that my little contribution, even though it's probably like, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds in the whole film, but like, but like 10 years of my life, it sort of, it contributes to people feeling safe, which is really cool. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. 100%. Yeah. Even if you that's were like fucking Oprah, it? <laughs> I, Imagine us hard hitting journalists. <laughs> I know, Tell yeah. us more about your knob. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're wasting your time. Don't kiss my ass, I can't feel it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that, that, that's kind of what I was saying, like having, I, I think like the, the people's perception of a stunt double is like, it, 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 it's what, like, we don't know what it is, you know what I mean? Mm. I don't realise how much work it is and, and what it is you're doing and the reason why these huge action films are so good yeah. is because of the, 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 what you put your body through in order to make that good. Yeah, I mean, there wouldn't be a trailer without stunting, right? Like, oh, yeah, that must be like your like, showreel, right? Yeah, exactly, it's just yeah. And all the, the stunts. that they don't think we have credible artists to give us awards. Like, all other departments are represented, but we're... That's mental. I mean, in society, if we don't reward the artists that take the most risks, then why is Picasso painting Guernica and Banksy spraying the West Bank? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. we put our lives on the line for the sake of storytelling, and the fact that the big ones don't give a flying fuck. I a think that's a genuine travesty. Mm. You know, yeah. I'm, well, I mean, I'm not comparing the two things, but like, I've always said, like, stand-up as an art form isn't respected big like time. other art forms. You know, big it's like, because we just get up there and talk about our knobs or whatever and then get paid. No, no, it's not. You're bringing no joy one. and social commentary, and you're on the fringes of what you know, is the, the social comments, like conversations and it's very vital for us to have laughter in our life. If I couldn't laugh at myself, I wouldn't be able to live with this. And mm. I've been able to laugh from day one because it's just like, that's my superpower. But let me tell you, if I had to do a backflip, I wouldn't be a comedian, mate. That's the thing. You know, I'd still be sitting in my armchair wanking over fucking Pornhub. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> we've all been there. Don't what that was a weird turn of events. <laughs> <laughs> What's Sorry, that got not? to do with anything? <laughs> I thought I'm still thinking about his knob, if I'm honest. Uh, it ain't big and it ain't clever. <laughs> Now that is the title of the podcast. <laughs> but, you know, it does try and think for me quite <laughs> Oh, mate. So you, uh, I, I don't want to dwell too much on the, on the accident that, that, that put you where you are, you know what I mean? But, yeah. but you, what, what actually amazed me was that you, you were conscious all the way through it. Yeah, as soon as I, I've broken enough bones to know what it's like. And, uh, yeah, as soon as my... You knew straight away, yeah. sternum folded into my nose. So it winded me, I landed, and my stunt coordinator grabbed my hand and said, squeeze my fingers. And uh, I couldn't squeeze, you know, like, and so I knew straight away I had a loss function like, up from my chest down. Do, do, do you feel like, I mean, you had a, a close relationship with your, your stunt coordinator at yeah, the time, he was yeah. a bit of a father figure to you. He's my film father, I love him to pieces, and there's always a seat at my table for him, and there's always a seat for me at his, his table. For sure. Hate and blame, like anger. Anger's oh. a sword my hands can't hold. Oh, I deep. Deep. Yeah. I mean, flipping oh, deep yeah. ruined it, sorry. Yeah, it's right, but you know, like, oh that's, yeah. So, it's why, why bother? Like, in life, we're all going to, disability is going to affect all of you. Mm. Everyone in this room is going to be touched in their life by disability. And disabled rights are human rights. Like, the amount of journalists have tried to rope me into the whole Joe Rowling controversy with the <laughs> Harry Potter thing, and I've just turn around and said, tell me when Disability Rights Month is. Yeah. Tell me when Disability Awareness Month is and I'll give you my opinion on it. The fact you can't is because society, it's quite easy to stick a rainbow flag on your company's banner, but it's not easy to adapt your buildings, employ people with disabilities. And I seek to change that. Like, and I'll be willing to stand. Come on. Fair play. So, Enough of all that bollocks. Right. Yeah, fuck that shit. Let's talk, <laughs> let's talk more about your knob. Knob <laughs> gags. Knob gags. Did, did you ever get Daniel pissed? I think so. You must have. You must have known him like as a Come kid, on. right? So surely he looked up to you like a, you know, like a brother. No, yeah, the brother. The yeah. first you, couple of films, he was my little brother. Yeah. And then as he grew, part of three. And then did you hear about his first sexual experience? Uh, yeah. No, no comment. 
<laughs> was it Hermione? Tell us. No, 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 no comment. Uh, <laughs> we, we went up to, we went on holidays together and I was able, me and Mark was able to, his mum and dad would always trust us to look after him, know mm. that we've got his best interest. So we went up to the Lake District, got him pissed a few times, went out for dinner. Um, and just had little adventures, went walking in the hills and... Walking in the hill, yeah, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Playing cricket off our night in the middle of a lounge, living yeah. on a big, lovely villa that we've already... This is uh, like believable. expert level diplomacy that you're showing. You know what right? I love most about you, Dave, is that when I look into your eyes, I can see, like, the things that you won't tell us, and I love you for that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a book. <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, uh, it's almost time for us to go, unfortunately. Well, we got a bit of time, we? No, we haven't. We've we've literally, you, li you literally told me that we've got until 10. Yeah, it's don't nine, listen to me. I'm a dickhead. <laughs> I, know, I am most aware than anyone else on the planet that you're a dickhead. But <laughs> we, time, time is relative. Time's, time's a concept, right? Exactly. It's not real. Man-made concept. Oh, you are you all right? We are all monkeys on us rocks. <laughs> we through space. Like, and that's that's every, what I say. You're right, yeah. Single day you're right. Let's carry on. Let's carry on then. <laughs> Don't worry about it. As long as my verbal diarrhea doesn't piss you lot off too much. Right. Uh, we're having a good time. Um, a great time. You were, uh, yes, yeah, so obviously, you, like, you, you, he grew up with you. Yeah, and uh, he's still my best mate to this day. Mm. Like, you all saw him grow up in front of camera, and I'm lux like, I have the luxury to see him grow as a man. Like, he's just had a, a like, member of his family, like, he knew baby, and <gasps> I just spent some time Exciting. with a little one oh, at incredible. New York, and yeah, just lovely to see, like, the person he is. Not many child actors get through that shit. No. That's lose, my, my point I was going to make is like a lot of people in his scenario really go off the rails, but he seems like he's got his head yeah. screwed on. Do you know Michael Jackson asked to meet him? Yeah. I bet he fucking did. <laughs> yeah, <'cause>, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He dodged that bullet. Yeah. <laughs> Big time. Yeah. Expelliarmus! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always say, I always say Voldemort hit me with the lesser known spell Wingardium Quadriplegia. Uh, that's, that's my line. Like, uh, Actually, it's Quadriplegia. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, mate, I'm a fucking Potter fan. Don't you oh, worry about it, mate. Lovely. I've read the books before the film come out. Yeah, yes, I can read. Do Unbelievable. You, do you it's play with your wand? <laughs> At all times, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> have, you, you've, have you done the sorting hat? Uh, yeah, you what? Know, in the documentary. You, oh, yeah, I see yeah, you, yeah. you put it, I see you put it, put it on. on my head. Well, basically, I had, like, the best make-or-wish day a film fan could ever have. <laughs> Um, yeah. It was your costume. It doesn't count if it's you. I know, yeah. It can't be make a wish day if you're going back into your old costumes, mate. Yeah, we, we saw all of our old costumes, yeah. me and Dan, and like, all of the old stuff, our wands and stuff. And uh, Dan put the sorting hat on my head. I was like, can it sort me a new pair of legs? I pissed myself when you said that. Honestly, fucking Well, I ain't seen the film, right? but someone reminded me of that joke. I was like, that's a good joke. You know the world's best wank gag was cut out the out the film? Here we go. World's Let's best wank gag. Let's have it. Hold on. Hold on. <coughs> hold on. Let's have a moment, because we'll make sure we cut this for a good Are clip. you ready for this? Yep. <laughs> so we were at the studios, and we were right outside the stunt stores. Next to the stunt stores is D-Stage. D-Stage was the stage I had my accident on. So I'm looking at where the old stunt office is, where the stores were, and then where my last footsteps were, where the last door I opened was. And it all got a bit real. Mm. It was a bit like, oh, this is heavy. And then the director was like, what do you feel? And I, uh, then I realised that the shower block and the toilets that every morning I had a wank in were <laughs> right next to the D-stage doors. <laughs> So instead, of, instead, of, I know, yeah, instead of me getting all like emotional, I was like, I think I had my last wank up there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, unbelievable. Yeah. And it, it broke it for me. Yeah. It, it, like, again, the ability to turn horror into humour. Oh, That's mate. a gift we all need to learn in our life because life ain't kind. So mm -hmm. We will all go through rough patches with ourselves, with our families, in our lives. and. To be able to laugh at it, like, is the only way, is the, the best medicine. So, so what you're saying is, have every wank like it's your last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you take nothing else away from this podcast, try not, <laughs> try not to involve your mum, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <sighs>
Do you know what one of my favourite that I said earlier that you know how to live and you do know how to live? You know oh, yeah. what I mean? It's like, you know, you've been dealt a rough hand, but you're like, this is the hand I've got and, and now I'm going to make the absolute best of it, right? We're only, we're only here once. No rehearsal. Like, make the most of it as you can, when you can. And one small act of kindness every day is how we make it livable for all of us. Oh, mate, yeah. that's incredible. Honestly, there's too much poignancy going on in this podcast, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, it's all a bit bloody serious. Now, back to my knob. <laughs> <laughs> But you're, I mean, like I said, you've got an incredible house, like it, 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 an excellent coffee machine, by the way. Oh, oh my, my goodness. God. He hasn't shut up about your coffee machine. Know, right? Broomstick insurance is lit, right? <laughs> <laughs> but ju just before like, lockdown ended, right, it was just before the, uh, the Euros, the, foot, the, you know, the, the football tournament. Oh, that my stuff. goodness, yeah. And, and you had a fucking 20 foot. TV, that TV, mate. Insta like, I'm joking, I'm it? I'm still, still in my garage. Massive. If anyone wants to Why is it in the garage, mate? No, yeah, it's weatherproof and all that lot. Actually, I would like to donate it to the local hospital. <gasps> uh, not the hospital, probably the local disabled children's school. They can put on outdoor cinema, cinema events with it, raise the money for the school. And oh, that's yes, wicked. So I'm about to. Speak you couldn't give it to the hospital. Where the fuck are they going to put that? I haven't no, got room no, for any more I've, beds. <laughs> I've got, I've got <laughs> gifts. Like, I'm really, really fortunate. Like, most people with a disability are, di you know, disproportionately below the poverty line. And it's, uh, I make sure I spread the love. So if I go on holiday, then I lend my house to people that, you know, I can help out with. Or wh whatever you can do, like, you've got to give back. That's why I raise money for the hospital and peer support, like, the only way we get through this is by helping each other, right? Yeah, Dave Holmes, you're an amazing man. Yeah, the sun doesn't shine out my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't fucking know! I know, You right? wouldn't know! <laughs> I know, you're lucky I'm sitting down. You mean, everyone in this room will be fucking we'd, sunburned. We'd be blinded. <laughs> You'd be blinded. Alright, here's a question for you. Uh, what, what's the most famous person in your phone book? Oh, oh. God. Oh. John Oakes. I've got some big ones. Hold on, have a sip of that first. Uh, what are you trying to feed in there? Why is it red, you weirdo? That's got six shots of tequila in it. <laughs> For fuck's sake. We're going to get those secrets before the book comes out, mate. Yeah, yeah, you know, I only feel drunk when I'm standing up. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey. Have a... Um, most famous person in my phone book. It's got to be Daniel Radcliffe. He's the most famous man on the planet, surely. Yeah, obviously Dan's in there. I've got Angelina in there. I've fuck off, Jolie. Indeed, yes. Who else? Angelina, uh, you want the bird out the rug, right? Uh, you know Angelina what? Ballerina. <laughs> I have a direct link to J.K. Rowling. That's a big one. Isn't a it? direct link to J.K. Rowling. Yeah, well, you're the opposite of Jordan Gray. I know. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, big time. I know. <laughs> Funny enough, me and Jordan wrote a script together about a stuntman that breaks his neck that's actually trans. No, well, that, would, that would start some fun. That is the crossover that nobody knew they knew. Yeah, well. Yeah, I know, right? That's but so it cool. It was that argument, and I was like, well, you know, I'm just a straight white man. It'd be nice to have a more complex character. Mm. Wouldn't it be nice to, you know, like, I know what it's like to not feel comfortable in your body, and that's why I sympathise with anyone that's on that journey. Well, it ain't fucking easy to mm. have body dysmorphia and all that lot. So, um, I just think what we should focus on with all that lot, right, is I'm here because of the help, right? There are kids going through some fucked up shit with that. And we should focus that there's someone willing to help them. You know, whatever that is, whether you think the help's right or wrong, the fact that there's just help there. Like, you go back two generations, there weren't that. And people were, you know, suicide rates were higher and all that lot. But I would also say, you know, it's wrong that, you know, trans people are five times more likely to be victims of sexual or physical assault. But so are disabled kids. Well, you know, yeah. On the fight, we should not erode what it is to be a woman in society. You know, there are still little girls in parts of the world that are five times more likely to be victims of sexual assault than they are to read. So you know, we've got a long like just because that's a big conversation because it asks a lot of all of us. Like we're all like, mm, I don't know where I sit with that. It's hard to hear. It's yeah. salacious, right? And yeah. But mm. we shouldn't just reflect on the negative. We shouldn't just reflect on the fact it makes us feel weird. We should be like thankful that there's some guidance now. There's at least a fucking conversation, right? And th when the conversation stops, that's when we're all fucked. Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, like, I mean, Jordan's our best mate. and uh, She's an amazing human mm, being. She's an incredible woman. Yeah. And, you know, w w she blew up, like, last year, like, had an incredible Edinburgh, and then become, you know, she, she had Friday Night Live, and yeah. she had this, 
like short one and a half minute thing and I was like what are you going to do for it she was like I'm going to get completely fucking naked yeah, rock out I'm going to play the keyboard with my knob yeah. on channel 4 and obviously that's it, brave right it, incredibly brave Fair you know play. And people, you know, obviously the internet blows up and she gets a lot of vitriol and hate around it, you know, but we're, this is still, we're still learning all this shit. When yeah, you look at it, time. it's like, you know, people were still, you know, ostracised just that, you know, you couldn't be gay publicly. Oh, mate, yeah. Like in my dad's generation, you know yeah. what I mean? This is all still new, we're all still learning. Yeah. The one thing about Jordan is, is that she, you know, she's a very humble uh, person and, and she's just, it's, it's her own journey. I think people forget that. Yeah, and my journey's my own and yours is yours exactly, like, it's yeah. very unique but we only get what we get and we should just learn to fucking love ourselves like, and 100%. give everybody else a break you know what i mean like For sure you know don't make judgments we're all you know whatever body you've got just love it because you know everyone in this room if you wiggle your toes right now right that's a 200 mile an hour nerve signal it's a fucking miracle right like don't take it for granted you know what i mean like mm. and with all things in life you must try it's hard it's hard this time of year it's hard for people when they're lonely or they lose, lose loved ones but you must always think like if you feel unlucky google the odds of what it is to be alive we've all won the lottery a thousand times over so mm. like just remember that and try and take whatever you can from it fair play and you're wasting it you fucking wasting it in here with us <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with you it's definitely time for us yeah to go. we're gonna wrap up yeah, just, like, yeah the bar rules and all that yeah I've listen got... like thank you for listening to me mate, mate david thank you so much please on. give it up for the amazing david holmes thanks uh, so much uh, mate I've got Thanks one so more much. question. Go on. One more question before we go. Now, for, for, is it really like a baby's arm holding an apple? <laughs> Sorry, no, that's not the question. That's not the question. Um, so, like for me personally, my, I had a very, like, very different journey in that I was very into stand-up comedy before it was like the new yeah. rock and roll, right? So I have these moments all the time where I'm like sitting in a green room with some of my heroes, you know, and I'd, I'm like, fucking, this is unbelievable. That I'm doing this, right? Yeah, yeah. What was like the the biggest moment that you can remember where you were sitting there? Like in a situation, you're like, how the fuck is this happening? You're trying to play it cool. Uh, I don't know. Like pressure makes diamonds. I've had stunt coordinators come up to me and say, you know, to reset this shot, if you fuck it up, it's half a million quid. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> oh my I'd fuck it up on purpose. Don't fuck <laughs> it up. You know, like, and that's I don't know. I like. I kind of. I you love that. that. Yeah. I feel the like, rush. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, enough. After you live with what I've lived with and overcome what I've overcome and. Even just, it takes two hours for me to get out of fucking bed. Like, you know. Same, bro. Same. same. Not the same. Not the same, <laughs> mate. Not the same. But when you, when you go through that. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> no, no, guys. <laughs> jokes. Always jokes, you know. And again, like, I, I, you have to just think, like, right, I'm up, I'm here, I'm present. And my biggest fight is my body. I'm having to let go of things all the time, like, especially this limb that's going. Um, and that lesson of loss that happens to me at 25 and it's a lesson we all have to learn in our life like and it's just one that teaches me to be present I, I'm happy I'm present here now with all you lot and uh, fingers crossed I don't run over any dumb fuck kids in the crowd. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, mate, Dave thank you so much mate for coming right, on no you are an absolute inspiration but you're an you're also an absolute geezer, mate, at the heart of it. We have yeah. had some conversations that are not suitable yeah. for any podcast. Yeah, there's something um, we definitely <laughs> have uh, We'd love to have you on again next time. I know you're doing loads of stuff all the time, but next time you're free, if you're around, like, hit us up. We'd love to have you on again. Yeah, yeah, listen, great. anyone part of fan base, I really hope you're old enough to... Really, like, yeah, yeah, of course. I really hope no one young is listening to this. Yeah, <laughs> there's definitely no one young listening to this. We said cunts. <laughs> yeah. So... I've yeah. done it again. Done panning That's stunts, happened. Panning yeah, stunts, yeah. Panning oh yeah, you're an amazing podcast, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about your podcast and, and, and yeah, give us your Instagram as well. Yeah. Yeah, David Holmes eighty three. Um, it's just yeah, like. David Holmes eighty three will will tag you in all sorts of stuff. And cunning stunts is your podcast. And definitely yeah. listen to that podcast as well because I think like uh, like I said, I think like the whole stunt area of movies. It's incredible. If, if I hadn't met Dave, I, would, I wouldn't have given them the respect they deserve, mate. Mm. You know, they make the films that you're watching. Uh, so it's well worth watching and, and watching Dave's documentary as well if you get a chance on Sky TV, HBO I watch it on Now TV Now TV otherwise you can watch it uh, probably from illegal streaming sites I don't know don't do that <laughs> pay your money to watch it <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> You're getting um, this for free. Pay your money. Um, but it's a, it's a truly incredible uh, and inspiring story, yeah. mate. And um, I'm really chuffed that you, you, you came down tonight. Thank you, mate. Ross, John, honestly, keep doing your thing. Like, bringing joy to the world. Like, always. Thank you, bro. We love you, mate. I appreciate it. Don't ever waste it, right? David Holmes, everyone. Woo! Oh, what a th what a podcast! If you have enjoyed it, if you have enjoyed it, tell everyone, tell your friends, tell your enemies. Well, hold on. We'll put links in the description of this podcast uh, to Dave's Instagram, yeah. to li uh, links to the Cunning Stunts podcast as well. Do check him out uh, and do watch that documentary. It's one of the most moving, inspiring things you'll ever Incredible. Like well. uh, but yeah, as John said, you know what I mean. Thanks for listening. Appreciate it. Uh, follow us on Instagram as Appreciate well. We've got way less followers than Dave. No, if you're not yeah. following us on Instagram already, what are you doing with your life? It's easy. <laughs> At Ross and John on most things. Um, and this has been the first ever live recording of the Organic Capers podcast. A big thanks to our studio audience. Thank you very much. A big thanks to 21 in South End, Elvira and all the team. They've been yeah, really great. Amazing. Us. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, do, you know what I mean? Just keep doing just download the fucking podcast yeah. and tell people about Down, it stop, 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 <laughs> sorry. download the flipping <laughs> podcast if you have enjoyed it please tell everyone I want tell a 20 your, foot screen in my garden I bet you do uh, <laughs> tell everyone tell your friends tell your enemies tell people you know people you've met once say hey have you heard of this great podcast mm. uh, it's got Ross and John off Radio Essex on it who shouldn't you tell though yeah. come on come don't on. tell your nan <laughs>